Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another repair video. Today we're going to be looking at this Nintendo Switch which has been sent in. This has been sent in from Germany and it's just the motherboard. So we're going to have to put it into a test housing to be able to figure out the issue. But basically this has been sent in because there's no power getting to the micro SD card module. So we're going to take a look, see if we can get this fixed and hopefully give the customer some good news. This has come from a viewer, which is why it's come from Germany. It's not normally viable to obviously, you know, send things from abroad, but he wanted me to try and fix it for him. So here we are. So before I do that, if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications and that way you don't miss any future videos. And if you find any use of these videos, if you're learning anything from them and you want to support me, I've got a Twitch channel which you can link your Amazon Prime account to absolutely free if you're already a Prime subscriber. And then if you subscribe to me on Twitch through Amazon Prime, it gives me around about $2.50 every month which goes towards buying new equipment and things like that. So I really, really appreciate the support. But that being said, we're going to try and fix this. So let's get into the video. Okay, okay, so I've got the booking sheet here. So basically when you book something in on my website, you'll be presented with this booking form which you need to send off with it. Um, basically, we've got the information here. I've got to cover up this bit because it's got the customer's information on. I don't want to give anyone's address out and things like that. But basically, as you can see, it's come from Germany. And there's no information on the form itself. So there's no actual information there to go by. But the customer basically got in touch on WhatsApp and said that there's no power going to the SD card connector. So this is a new one on me. If the SD card connector is good, then it's going to be a fairly new one. But let's just plug it into a housing. And we'll see what goes on. So I can use a test SD card. It's included the module with it. So we'll hook up the uh, backlight there. And I'm going to hook up the SD card module itself. Okay, that didn't feel like it clicked in properly. But, you know, we'll, we'll take a look. We'll see what goes on. So let's just hook up the battery. I don't know if this battery's got any charge in it or not. But we're about to find out. So I'll just slot that in there. And then if I take the USB-C cable, I know this test housing is a bit dirty, but if I take the USB-C cable, and I'm not getting nothing at all. Okay, now I am. I've just knocked the SD card connector off though. That's fine. Took a few seconds for the battery to activate. I mean, to be fair, it's a test housing, so, you know. Right, okay, so we have that there. What kind of battery do we have on this? Hmm. Why is that not booting? Okay, that's odd. Does it charge? Okay, we've got a faulty USB-C port here. It's either that or the software is just incredibly slow. All right, well, we'll check out the USB-C port a little bit later on. So I'm actually going to need a game card module. I've just realized I need the touch screen to be able to get to the home screen. So I'm going to need to hook that up. Make sure that you remove the battery when you do this. Okay, that definitely feels like the charge port is dodgy. There we go. So this is working fine. I've got plenty of battery. 67%. Yeah, that's definitely dodgy. Look at that. Now watch this. I'll hold that there. Move it. Oh, <laughs> now he's not doing it. Now he's not doing it. That's weird. Alright, well, I'll investigate that more later. I'm not really fussed too much about that at the minute, as long as we get it to turn on. Okay, so there's the SD card module, so now I need a SD card as well. So I've got one of those in my own Nintendo Switch, 128 gig. 
So let's just plug that in. I'm going to hold this in place. Yeah, it's definitely not really, definitely not connecting, is it? Let's push down, see if it makes a difference. No, nothing. Okay, well, I know that I've got a working SD card module in this switch here, so I'm just going to take off the back cover on this one. I'm just going to nick the one out of this for now. Okay, so we've got ourselves a working module there. I'm going to keep the foam there because that way, they actually, no, I'll just, uh, I'll just pop the customers just there, just so I know where it is. I'll just leave that there. So let's just see what goes on with one of my own working modules. It definitely doesn't feel right on that connector at all. Yeah, that's definitely not putting out anything. Okay, that clicked in fine, but still nothing. Okay, well that's not working. So let's see if we can figure this out then. So I'm gonna take this board back out of my test housing here. And this is why we don't connect anything apart from essentials up because it's just nice and simple then. So there's my test housing. I'll put my own switch back together once I'm done. It's fine. Let's take a look under the scope and let's see if we can figure this out, shall we? All right, so we can see we've got the connector here and yeah, it looks okay. I don't know if that's actually been changed or not. Actually, we've got some damage here, so that's that's going to be why it doesn't feel right. If you look just here, we've got some damage. Now, the question is, are all of these making a contact? So, to find that out, we need to use the multimeter. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the multimeter in continuity mode, and I'm going to just trace back all of these pins and just see if we've got a contact on the pins to the corresponding point on the board. So, I've got the multimeter in continuity mode. That's the mode that's going to beep. When we complete a circuit, and all I'm going to do is just probe each of these pins. And just see if we get a contact. Okay, we don't seem to get a contact here. Interesting. Let's just zoom in on that. Actually, is that a ground? Yeah, it's a ground. Okay. Okay, we're getting contact on all of these. Well, we haven't got a great connector, but it shouldn't really stop it from connecting up and actually making a contact. So let's just have a quick look around. Let's see if we can figure this out. So I'm not sure if any prior work has been done on this, to be honest. Right, okay, I'm not finding any shorts, but interestingly, I do see some evidence of a rework here. Something's happened to this board. Ah. Yeah, I should have looked here to start with. This explains it. This Max IC has been reflowed. So, the little bit I do know about the SD card connector, the Max IC does power the SD connector. That's not sitting flat. So that's either going to need to be reboard or replaced. But that's definitely been reworked. You can see flux around it. So I'm going to say most definitely that has been reworked in the past. Let's just have a look around here for shorts. Okay, I'm not finding any shorts around Max uh around this max ic but that's definitely been reworked i think that's been reballed and it hasn't been installed correctly to be honest so i'm going to try a light reflow on this and see if that helps it 
Yeah, that's definitely had some rework. I mean, I haven't put flux on that, and it's definitely been worked on. Okay. All right, so let me just clean this up. So I'm going to use a bit of isopropyl alcohol with a cotton swab and just clean up. Just get rid of this flux. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. Okay, that's nice and clean now. Okay, I think this SD card connector is going to need replacing, to be honest. Yeah, it's just not making it. It's just not doing anything. Right, do we get voltage on it now? That's the question. Zero volts. Stone dead. So, I believe that max IC is going to need to be replaced, to be honest with you. So I'm going to pull one from a donor board and I'm going to reboard it. So I've got a feeling that what's happened here is someone's taken this off and they've reboard it incorrectly. I've got a feeling this has been replaced and it's been reballed without a stencil or without proper solder balls. That's my theory, at least. I can't be sure, but that's my theory. So I'm going to add some flux. Okay, so I don't know if this chip is going to be good or not, so I don't think I should try and reball that one, I think it's going to be a waste of time. So the chip in question that I'm attempting to replace, the reason I'm going to replace this is number one it's been reflowed in the past, there's definitely signs that it's been reflowed or reballed. Uh, number two is that from what I remember of the micro SD card circuit power does come from the uh, max 77620A chip so I'm just replacing this solder that's on here with some leaded solder the reason is I don't know whether it's leaded solder on there and by replacing the solder it's going to lower the melting temperature and it's going to allow me to wick it up to clean the pads relatively safely Uh, you have to be super careful here because there's a lot of solder balls and it's a very tight area. And not only that, but they are very small solder balls. I believe they're probably 0.25 or 0.3 millimeter, so they're not exactly very big. It doesn't take much to tear them. So I've replaced these chips before. They're not too bad. Now you can buy them brand new, but I just haven't got any in stock. Right. I've lost where I was working there. There it is. Okay, that's that done. So, what I've done there is just prepped this ready for a new chip. I know I've got a little solder blob, but I'll deal with that later on. It's not a big deal right now. And the solder blob's not exactly shorting out on anything. I think that is actually literally the specific cap for the... Uh, power for the SD card to be honest I think I could be wrong I think it's it's very close to there I know it's on that side and I think it's very close to the cap that's got the little solder blob on okay so I've got a donor board here and I know this chip is good because it does boot the board it's just got issues so I can steal one from here I'm going to add some flux. If you're wondering why I'm doing it with tweezers, it's because I've lost my nozzle. And uh, I'm too lazy to grab a new one.
Right, there we go. So there's a replacement chip. So I don't know if you notice in here, but when I took the chip off the original board, off the board I'm working on, all of these solder balls here were shiny. So they were, they were all sparkling sort of thing, and this one isn't. That's because this is lead-free solder. Um, the other board had a leady solder on it, which means that it's a lot shinier. It's got a much lower melting temperature as well. But that's another giveaway to the fact that it's been replaced, is because it's leaded solder. So from what I can tell, that chip had been replaced. I could be wrong, but it's at least been reflowed. There was flux on there, so it's at least been reflowed in the past. Okay, so let's just add some flux there. Again, that's way too much. Never mind. So I'll just grab some fresh tweezers and keep the rest on, uh, on the tweezers to use in a little while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some leaded solder to this now, to this chip, and then I'm going to clean the chip as well. Or, well, I don't necessarily need to clean it, it depends on whether I can find my stencil or not. It's been a while since I've re one of these. So you can see how that's gone shiny. I know it's a little bit out of focus there. There we go, but that's gone shiny compared to the rest of the balls. Okay. I'm actually going to wick it away. I'm not going to leave the solder there, whether I use solder paste or not. I'd rather keep it clean. So I'm going to take a bit of wick just there. I don't actually have a chip holder that can hold this chip. And I've got to be super careful because it is a glass chip, which means it can crack very, very easily. These are not too expensive, these chips. I've just got on in stock, which is why I'm taking one from a donor. Okay, I'm going to add some more flux just to make sure I don't end up damaging it, I'll stuff it, just leave the lot on there, it won't hurt it. There we go, I think that's clean. I'll just scrub it with a bit of IPA just to see if we've got all of the solder off. And that's beautiful and flat. Just got to be careful not to crack the chip. There we go. That's perfect. Ready for some nice new shiny solder balls. And as per usual, I don't have a clue where my solder paste stencil is for this chip, which means I'm going to manually reball it. So a manual reball involves manually placing every single solder ball one by one onto this chip. So I'm going to add a bit of flux there. So I'm going to manually place them and basically just flow them into place once I'm done. So what I'm going to do is just add a tiny tad of flux there. And oftentimes I will say there's no such thing as too much flux, but when you're doing reballing, there is absolutely too much flux, and it's a lot less than you think it will be. So just be careful how much flux you put on if you're doing this. You just want enough just to stick the balls down. That's literally it. Okay, so I'm going to drop some solder balls on. If I can. So these are 0.25 millimeter balls, which I've just put there. So what I want to do then is I want to manually place these solder balls on the onto each pad. So that just means just take each ball and just drop it on top like that. It doesn't take me long, but I'll fast forward through anyway. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you sit there and watch. I'll fast forward through this and uh, I'll pick it up when it's ready to reflow. Okay, that took a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but it's done. So what I need to do now is I need to basically just flow the solder balls down. And for that, I've got a little attachment, which I'll show in a little while once I've flowed these balls down. So I'm having to move everything out of the way. So I'll show you this. It's basically a little attachment and it screws onto the end of my soldering iron tip. So onto my normal soldering iron tip. And what it'll do is it'll all heat up and basically flow those solder balls down for me. 
Okay, so now I just need to try and get it in focus so I can just make sure that we didn't end up with any knocked balls. Uh, there's one there's one solder board I'm a little bit concerned about. It's hard to get this in focus. Oh, there you go, that's better. Okay, so there's one ball here that I'm a little bit concerned about. Just there, that's it. That's fine. Okay. Okay, so what I need to do then, you can see we've got this chip here and it's on the attachment. The attachment's not very secure, but it's fine. I'm going to try and secure it a little bit more. So this little attachment, it goes on the end of the soldering iron. So I've got the soldering iron tip here, as you can see. And then that goes onto there. And um, what that's going to do is he's going to get the soldering iron to heat up this attachment to a point where he's going to melt these balls. So I'm going to turn the soldering iron on and that's going to warm up. It's going to take a while to warm up. This is a solid brass attachment. So just bear that in mind. It's going to take a long while to warm up. And hopefully these all flow down and they should flow down without the use for hot air. Come on. Okay, here they go. Starting to move. Okay, so it doesn't seem to be flowing them fully into place. Maybe there's just not enough flux around. So I'm going to assist it. I'm going to use a little bit of warm air. Okay, I think that's actually the best it's going to get without putting flux on it. So I'm going to have to cool it down. Which means I need to move that out of the way. And I'm going to need to let that cool down so as the solder balls all basically solidify. And now I'm going to add some flux onto the chip. Okay, there it goes. That's nice. Now let's just drop this back onto the attachment. And then it should flow fairly quickly. Damn, that was quick. <laughs> I know I said quickly, but damn, that was quick. Oh, just look at that. That is beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. So just to show you then, this is that attachment. So I've got to be careful because it's still, yeah, it's still hot. So I need to wait for that to cool down. But basically, it's made by Mechanic. So it's fairly reputable. And... Yeah, I'm not going to get that out. Uh, it's made by Mechanic, and it's basically about £2, something like that, about $3, off AliExpress. I'll try and link to it in the video description if I can still find it. Well, basically, what that does is it connects to your soldering iron, any tip, and it's basically universal. So it'll connect to your soldering iron, and then you just drop your chip on there with the solder balls on there, and it'll flow them all into place for you. Really, really handy tool to have. Uh, by the way, I will say that that tool is not sponsored. I just really, really like it. It's very, very handy to have, honestly. It really is handy to have. All right, so we're going to get the chip freshly reballed. And I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to make sure I get it the right orientation. Okay, so the chip sits that way with the dot here, up here, in the top right. And it might be best for me to just get some flux there first, just because I want it to sit down onto the board. I want it to sit down nicely and be a good little chip. Hopefully we get this right. Let's just add a little bit of flux there. So I don't want too much flux because I don't want to end up with the chip floating all over the place. But what I do want is just for the flux to hold the chip down in position. Doesn't have to be perfectly lined up. So surface tension should pull it in. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to get my airflow set to 30% at 440 degrees Celsius. And uh, let's flow this chip down into place. So just for the time being, I'm just going to hold it.
Like I said, I don't want this to float out everywhere. Okay, it's sat down, it's just moved into place. So that should be in position now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase my airflow to 50%. The same temperature, 440 degrees Celsius. Give that chip a nudge. So let's just clean this up then. And that capacitor there has actually sorted itself out. So I don't need to worry about touching that up with the iron. I'm not worried about a little bit of excess solder on one pad. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not shorting out on anything or anything like that. Okay, that's the last bit of isopropyl alcohol in that bottle. Never mind. Let's make it count. And there we go, should be nice and clean. Okay, so there's a nice shiny new chip on there, as you can see. Max 776208, it's a power management IC. It's responsible for quite a bit of power management, including things like the battery charging and things like that. And it's actually a fairly common value point for loads of different things. But that looks absolutely beautiful to me. I'm happy with how that sat down. Let's give it a test. Let's have a look, see if that works now. Does it give us a backlight? It does. Okay, that might be better. There we go. Got no speakers plugged in, but never mind. Uh, I am actually going to plug a speaker in, to be honest, because then I can hear whether or not it recognises a game card. So I am going to plug the speakers in. Okay, we've got game sounds now. So this is my SD card module. Yes, let's go. That connected up, then I heard it. So we should be getting power to that capacitor now. Okay, so we've got DC power. Oh, okay, maybe not. Huh. What? We might need to change that connector. Hmm. I heard it. Come on. I heard you work. Let's try and turn it back on again. Hmm. Oh. Shit. Okay, that's strange. There you go. Yeah, that connector needs replacing as well. So the connector is faulty. Well, I did press on that earlier on and it was, it was playing up. So that connector also needs replacing. Let's get that done. And then we should be good to go on this. It is picking that SD card up now, but I did test that earlier with that little push test and it wasn't doing that. So I think it's a combination of the Max IC being damaged and the uh, and the SD connector being damaged as well. So we should be good to go with just replacing that connector. 
So let's do that. I'll pop it under the microscope. I'll show you how I'll do these. Right, so what I tend to do with these is I'll hang them over the edge of the table. So as the connector is hanging off the table. And then what I'll do is I'll remove the nozzle from my hot air. And I'll set it to 440 degrees Celsius at 40% airflow. And I'll heat up from the bottom of the board, so underneath the board. Now if I just move the microscope across here, you can see I've got the nozzle. And I'm heating it up from underneath, so as I'm not putting any direct heat on the top of the board. The reason for that is because we do have connectors just off to the side as well. We don't want to melt them. So, like I said, I'm just going to heat up from underneath. And I'm going to basically desolder this old connector. So every so often I'll just give it a really gentle wiggle just to see if it's ready or not. So you can see that's starting to move. I'm going to wait. I'm not going to touch it. And there we go. There we go. Don't touch it until you know 100% that every pin is melted. And the reason for that is because if we damage these traces, it's very difficult to run traces underneath the connector. It's not easy at all. I don't really fancy doing that. All right, next I'm going to add some flux. And then I'm going to add some leady solder just to reach in the pads. So I use Kester 6040. I do get asked that quite a lot. I use Kester 6040, and if you're in the UK, you need to log on to the Amazon US website and have it imported, because they don't sell it in the UK. Well, they do, but it's twice as much. Okay, I'm just going to touch up this resistor here because it didn't look great earlier on I'll just tuck that up while I'm there might as well and now I'm going to get a replacement connector and drop a new connector on here so I'm going to drop this roughly in place and then I'm going to do the same process again I'm going to heat it up from underneath and you'll see this flux start to melt and eventually it will just pull itself down there we go, perfect. I'm going to let that flow for another 10 to 15 seconds. And then just give it a tap. Just keep moving it around a little bit. And the reason for that is just to make sure that we get some solder move from the pads to the pins. And that just jumped back into place, which means it's done. And we're good to go. So finally, I just want to clean up, just get rid of the flux that's on here. I never leave flux on the board. Sizzle, sizzle. So just get rid of as much flux as you possibly can. You don't have to get rid of all of it because the isopropyl alcohol is going to neutralise it, but it's just going to look a lot nicer when it goes back to the customer. The customer is going to realise that you don't treat their boards like crap I always try and treat my customers property with respect which is very important okay that's looking beautiful absolutely beautiful good to go Yes, that's better. So I'm going to unplug that and plug it back in. Well, just clip it back in. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. This job is done. There we go. Absolutely fantastic result there. So, as you can see, someone had attempted to reflow the 77620A, which is a power management chip for the Nintendo Switch. It's what we call the Big Max. So there's quite a few Maxes on there, and the 77620A is the Big Max on the back of the board. So if you take a look at this board here, it's located just there, just at the top of the board. And it's not very expensive, a couple of pounds on AliExpress, and job is a good one. So by replacing that, obviously I might nearly reboard it, but you know, you're better off if you, especially if you're not proficient with reboarding, you're much better off 
just buying a new chip. Uh, you can buy them off eBay, Amazon. Uh, AliExpress is going to be cheapest if you get them directly from China. But, you know, if you just want one, then you can go ahead and just buy one from eBay or something like that. And you're going to be able to replace that nice and easy. Not the most difficult task in the world. And, um, yeah, by replacing that and then by replacing the SD card connector, this is working absolutely perfect. So if I just remove this from here, yoink. There you go. So that is working beautifully. I will give it a full test. I will make sure the customer module works as well. But with my test module there, it's working absolutely 100%. So, yeah, that's going to be for this video. If you do have any comments or questions, let me know down in the comment section down below. I'll always do my best to read and reply to them all. If you want to organise your own repair, you can do so by getting in touch using the website address in the video description. There's a link to my website there, and you can book in the repair there. You'll be given one of those forms that I showed at the start of the video. You can also get in touch using the contact page if you need to obtain a quote. Please don't get in touch if you want to know how to fix something yourself. So if you want to try and fix it yourself and you want anyone's help to try and do it, you know, whether that's mine or someone else's, uh, there's a Discord link in the video description. I'll keep getting requests for self-help on a business email and it's clogging up my email address. It's causing me to get some very angry customers and, yeah, I can't reply to customers if people are clogging up my email address. So please, please, please use the Discord. Don't use WhatsApp and don't use um, my business email if you want me to try and help you fix your device where I'm just giving you a little bit of advice. Just use the Discord because that way then I can kind of prioritise things. If you enjoy this type of content, like I said earlier, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. That way you don't miss any future videos. And if you find this content useful, you can support me by becoming a Patreon supporter using the link in the video description. You can become a Twitch Prime subscriber by heading over to Twitch, link your Amazon Prime account, and then subscribe to me monthly on Twitch. Give me around about $2.50 every month. It's absolutely a massive help, and I really do appreciate it. Or you can become a channel member by using the join button below the video. You can also donate directly if you feel like donating. There's a link to PayPal and also a link to my debit card processor. Um, you can donate through either of those as well. I really, really do appreciate it and I appreciate the support. I appreciate you all watching. Thank you all so, so much. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.